After the American Revolution, a young woman named Barbara Davidson came back to live with her family in the depreciation lands of North Beaver County. The tragedy that followed would make her name part of Beaver County's oldest lore. Um, she had been married briefly, according to the, the usual version of the legend, but her husband either disappeared, died, nobody's quite sure. And she was supposedly very well liked. She was a good, uh, good at a variety of things. One of the things she did on the farm was take care of the sheep. Barbara also took care of many other animals and did chores around the farm. One day, her family set out on a multi-day journey to Pittsburgh to get more livestock and farm supplies. They left Barbara in charge of the farm. They're gone for a few days, they come back, and they can't find Barbara anywhere. And they search and they search, and they alert the neighbors who are all concerned, and, and they look around, they can't find her. But after a day or two, they realize there's an odd smell coming from below the floorboards. And they go outside and they check, and they look under the, the, the house, and they find Barbara's body shoved under the house, missing its head. Barbara's head was never found, and her killer was never caught. Over the years, many people have allegedly seen her headless spirit wandering where her family's farm used to be and throughout a wide area surrounding it. And numerous people have supposedly seen this ghost and it forms kind of out of white mist without a head and then takes on the shape of a woman and will walk around. Throughout the decades, people have had experiences with Barbara's ghost. Local historian and teacher Rich Oswald extensively researched Barbara's story and provided a basis for what we know today. And uh, Rich had gathered stories from many, many people over the years, many teenagers and, and, and people in that area. And uh, one of the things they discovered was that uh, in the f sometime around the 50s, uh, somebody started to see her with a pig's head replacing her missing head. You know, and It may have just been a joke or a story, but that's how she got the name the Pig Lady. Researchers continue to look into the facts of Barbara Davidson's life. Her story lives on. The historical details about the case are still kind of up in the air. There's some people doing research right now on it, um, and they're finding that you know Barbara wasn't as young as they said, and she probably was older and probably had some disputes with her neighbors. Um, so she was probably you know a figure that that, that stuck in kind of the local local memory. You know, often these tragic tales, it's, you know, it's, if she really was murdered, as they said, um, you know, it could just be a way to remember women who often weren't, weren't recorded in history at that time. Um, it could be a way to, to uh, just remember tragic events, you know, something shocking in a rural community is, you know, someone getting their head, head cut off. And people do that, they attach, you know, the ghost stories almost kind of grow over time as, as a form of history, remembering these things that, that had happened that often people would normally want to forget. But a ghost story allows you sometimes to even talk about difficult things in a way that you don't have to directly address maybe other issues, but you can kind of address them through a ghost story. It's hard to say with a ghost story that old what initially spurred it on. Um, but it's certainly, it's such a great and interesting story. And I only mentioned a fraction of it here. There's dozens and dozens of accounts. All kinds of people have supposedly had firsthand experiences. And it certainly lives on in the community and resonates 